and welcome to the Hippodrome for the sixth and final game in the Speed Chess Challenge, in which two of the most inventive and innovative chess players in the world are battling out for the handsome London Docklands Trophy, a nice piece of engraved glass. But really, the key thing, I suppose, is to win. And to recap on the score, there's no way that Nigel Short can win, because at the moment it's Kasparov 4, Short 1. But still, there's an awful lot to play for, particularly in chess terms. So will you please welcome the world number seven and the highest rated British player ever, Nigel Short. It suits you so well, that dinner jacket. I think all chess should be played in a dinner jacket from now on. What do you think? Why not? Why, Why not? not? Why yes. not? <laughs> Nigel, you can't win the contest, but you can win this game. Now, I know Gary isn't listening, so what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I happen to know otherwise, so... <laughs> so you're not going to tell? I'm not going to say. Have you got any devious <laughs> tricks, you know, in the back? Ah, uh, yes. Well, I've always got devious tricks. All right. Well, let's see how it works out. <laughs> Nigel, good luck. Okay. Nigel Short. And now, the man with the commanding lead, as indeed he should have, the world chess champion, Gary Kasparov. <laughs> okay. I'm very happy. <laughs> You're very happy? <laughs> yes. That was his trick. <laughs> That's what he was doing with the margarine over the floor uh, a few minutes ago. I'm used to see dirty tricks. You're used to seeing yes. dirty tricks. <laughs> Have you enjoyed the game well. so far? Yes, of course. Yes? Yes. Especially the wind. Especially the wind? Yes. yes. No, 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 not the result, but the event. Right, uh, to the event. Yes, because I want to complain about the result. You want to complain about the result? Yes. Why? Why? There is the only result when I can't complain. It's six love. You're a go and play chess. Gary Kasparov. <laughs> there we are, the mark of a winner, but will he win tonight? We'll see. Taking up the commentary for us, Grandmaster Raymond Keane, working the clock, the arbiter, Bob Wade. <laughs> Ready. Yes. And Nigel Short as White making his favourite opening move, the King's Pawn, as in his other two games with the white pieces. And the, for the third time, the Sicilian defence. Out comes White's knight. And Kasparov chooses the same as in the first games. Short occupies the centre, pawn exchange, and the knight takes back. Knight comes out attacking the white pawn, white defends, and the Nidolf variation again. Nidolf Sicilian. Nidolf named after the famous Polish Argentine grandmaster Miguel Nidolf, who introduced the whole idea. And this is looking very much like the second game. Both sides repeating the moves from that game. Short solidifying his centre and preparing for an attack on the right hand side <coughs> of the board, the king's flank. Black develops the knight. And that same sharp pawn thrust that we saw in the second game. Black stops the pawn advancing. Yes, the same pawn avalanche. The white massive pawns on the king's side threatening to advance and swap the black position. World champion in deep thought. The famous Rodin thinker pose. And a new move. The black knight jumps into the center. Kasparov has deviated from the second game. So now we have an entirely new position on the board. Short face with an unusual problem. 
the natural thing to do is for White to move the Queen. No, he's moved the Rook. Threatening to push on with Pawn from G4 to G5. But sooner or later, the natural thing for White to do must be to move his Queen and then <coughs> castle on the left-hand side of the board. That's the only way to prosecute a kingside attack. Black Queen comes out, attacking the White Pawn on B2. Queen defends the Pawn on B2. A somewhat passive move, perhaps not exactly what Nigel had in mind when he played this aggressive opening. And Kasparov counterattacks immediately, a pawn thrust in the centre. White has problems here, his whole strategy must be to castle on the queen side of the ball, the left flank. But now the white queen on c1 jams up that possibility, makes castling impossible for the time being. And without queenside castling, White's game does not hang together at all well. Meanwhile, Short is faced with this tremendous black counter-attack in the centre. A counter-attack <coughs> that's come unusually early, considering that Kasparov is playing with the black pieces. Playing black, of course, in chess is rather like facing the serve in tennis. You're meant to defend for a few moves, but here Kasparov is already attacking. Kasparov slumped back in the chair, leaning forwards now. Obviously rather content with his position. Short really has serious problems here, how to face this black central counter-attack. He's already three minutes down on the clock after these few opening moves. Short at last moves. Bishop, f1 to e2. Purely defensive, defending the weak pawn on f3. Absolutely not the kind of move Short wants to be playing with white in this last game. No, first of all, the world champion captures pawns in the centre. And short recaptures with the knight. And knight takes knight, pawn takes knight. Black now has a clear positional advantage. The white pawn on e4 is isolated and therefore weak. And the black knight has a marvellous outpost square right in front of it. Further, black's development flows very easily. Surely now, Kasparov is going to play his bishop from f8 to c5, developing that bishop and hitting the white knight. A modest move. Kasparov hasn't put the bishop on c5. I find that very surprising. But that bishop move attacks the white pawn on h4 and threatens to take it with check. This is something that Short absolutely must stop. Rook back to h1. Probably the only way of defending that pawn satisfactorily. But now white's lost a lot of time with the rook. There are some very good rules in chess that say don't move the same piece twice in the opening unless you absolutely have to. And Short can't be at all pleased that he's been forced to move that rook from h1, where it started, to g1, and now back to h1 again. Kasparov pursing his, pursing his lips. The veins standing out on his face. Concentration. This man has a brain like a massive computer. In fact, there's no computer in the world at the moment that can challenge Gary Kasparov at chess successfully. Only a minute between them now. Kasparov is still thinking. He's got the advantage, but how to pursue it? And the bishop has developed. Pawn goes to c3. And Kasparov's queen retreats out of the line of White's bishop. Now Nigel must surely move his queen in order to get castled. No, first of all he drops the bishop back, a defensive move. Now Kasparov has a choice. 
castling kingside or castling queenside, both options for black hair. No, first of all, Kasparov makes this pawn thrust. The idea is very interesting. He hopes to attack already on the queen side of the board in case white castles there. It's a preemptive strike. Queen moves. Now at last, castles queen side for white becomes possible. It looks as if white can castle kingside as well, but don't forget that white king's rook has already moved twice, and once the rook has moved, castling is no longer a legal option. Black's knight invades the white position, a dominating square, c4, a really powerful outpost for that knight. Yes, Nigel's swapped off the black knight. This seems to be a forced move. Kasparov recaptures with the queen, and white attacks the queen with a pawn. <coughs> Black's queen goes back. But this is looking very serious for Nigel. He has weak pawns everywhere. The pawn on e4 is weak, the pawn on c3 is weak. At last he castles queenside. Kasparov castles on the king's side. Preparing to deploy his rooks for an attack against the white king. Nigel moves his king into relative safety on the b1 square. And Kasparov launches his own attack against the white king. Another pawn coming forward. This is going to be a race on opposite sides of the board. Who's going to get there first? In theory, it should be Kasparov. And Nigel is three minutes down on the clock, looking at the clock nervously. Nigel must get something going on the king's side if he's to survive this game. Yes, he sacrificed the pawn. Kasparov's blocked with h5, and the white rook comes back to g1. White's threatening to push the pawn on from g5 to g6. Kasparov ignores it, continues his own attack against the white king. <coughs> the same tactic, white plays b3 to b4. Nigel has done exactly the same on the queen side as Kasparov did on the king side. He's blocked the assault, bypassing the black pawn rush. Kasparov puts a rook on c8, attacking the white pawn on c3. Black queen and black rook together, ganging up on the c3 pawn. That pawn must be defended. Nigel now almost five minutes down on the clock. The rook defends the pawn sideways. Nigel's hoping, obviously, to bring that rook across to the kingside, swinging it across the third rank to try and draw up some kingside counterplay. A safety move by Kasparov, stopping White from pushing his own pawn onto g6. Simply a safety precaution. Bishop attacks the black queen. Queen sidesteps, attacking the white pawn on e4. And White's queen defends the pawn. Black rook advances to a strong outpost. I must say, Nigel is making the best of a bad job with this position. A good move. The bishop occupies an excellent post here, scything through the black king side. Nigel's position is still bad, but counter chances are developing. With a bishop like that, dominating the centre, there are always tactical tricks. Black doubles his rooks on the c-file, threatening the white pawn on c3. Nigel defends 
with the Queen, adding extra protection sideways to that pawn. And there's another idea behind that Queen move. White's hoping, in the future, somehow, to break through to the h6 square with his queen. It's very difficult to see how this can happen at the moment. The white pawn on g5 is in the way. But perhaps a knight sacrifice, or maybe a rook sacrifice on the king's side, and that queen might break through. Nigel's playing this part of the game very inventively, and much better than he played the opening. Of course, the position is still bad. But, counter chances are beginning to emerge. Black bishop comes out, attacking the white pawn again. Even this is a minor triumph that Black should offer the exchange of one of his bishops. And the rook comes across, defending the pawn. Nigel isn't interested just in playing knight takes bishop. Black pawn advances again. We've seen Kasparov do this sort of thing so many times before. Push a pawn forwards as near the white position as possible. It can be a tremendous menace in the endgame. Don't forget, when a pawn reaches the back rank, it becomes a queen. And the closer those pawns get, the more dangerous they become. Queen goes to f4. <coughs> Nigel certainly got some counter-attacking ideas on the king's side against Gary's own king. The time difference whittled down. Only about two minutes in it now. And a defensive move. The bishop drops back, defending the pawn on f7. And white's knight retreats. Very good move. Now the bishop on e5 not only threatens on the king side but defends the c3 pawn backwards retroactively. That bishop on e5 really is a tower of strength. Nigel's really making a fight of this. He's also threatened to play his knight to a5. Knight to a5. Does that stop it? Kasparov's moved his queen. Knight a5 is still possible. However, Black then has one of those famous tricks for which Kasparov is absolutely notorious. If knight a5, rook takes b4, check is possible. Nigel mustn't fall into that. It's very tempting to play knight a5, but he mustn't do it. He's played knight a5. I didn't think this was possible. Maybe there's a flaw in the world champion's calculations. I must say it looked okay to me, but maybe there's something wrong. Perhaps Nigel's seen further. Maybe Nigel's idea is just to move his king into the corner to the a1 square. Black's move, if he plays rook takes b4 check, king a1. What a cunning idea by Nigel. It seems that the world champion has fallen into a trap of his own making. Kasparov's done it. Rook takes b4 check, king a1. Queen moves out of the attack. Pawn takes rook. Queen takes pawn on b4. Queen retreats. Nigel short is a whole rook up. Kasparov now behind on the clock. Must be absolutely obvious to him that he's screwed up. This I don't believe. What is going on? The rook attacking the queen? White cannot take the rook. He should take queens. Extraordinary move by Kasparov, but it must be desperation. If Nigel doesn't panic, he must win this game. Queen takes queen. Bishop takes queen. And the rook moves. Pawn attacks. This is complete nonsense. White must be winning easily. Rook moves off attack. Kasparov takes the bishop. Rook takes bishop check. King moves out of check. White still a whole rook up. Knight retreats. But minor difficulties caused by the position of his king. Bishop checks to the white king. King moves rook check. King moves away. Rook takes knight, my god. This can't work. This cannot work. Just take the rook, Nigel. No. King up, attacking two pieces. That's even stronger. Yes, Kasparov's resigned.
Michael Short has won the final game. Well, was that sensational or was it sensational? Gentlemen, come over here. What a fantastic way to end this particular contest. I, <laughs> amazing. First of all, a word from the winner of the game, Nigel Short. Nigel, congratulations. Well done. Be honest, you must have been worried in the early stages. Well, I certainly was. It's a very strange match because whenever I've got a, a reasonable position early on in the game, I've lost. <laughs> but then, and when I've got an a... awful position like today, you know, then, uh, well, I won. It was a very unusual match. It was certainly very... And how yes. do you feel now? Oh, well, not too bad. Not too bad. <laughs> not too bad. I'm not surprised. Uh, Gary. It wasn't six, love. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't five one. It was four two. No, but there is no difference between five one and four two. <laughs> Surely, so in the I, big... could, I couldn't win this position. As you. Bishop takes b four, c takes b four. Bishop takes e four. Queen takes a rook takes b four. Listen, do, do the analysis yes. afterwards. No, yes. I explain to him. I explain to him why. Because you won. So, why? Why I lost? <laughs> oh, why you lost? Okay. No, I was much better again. It's very strange. Yes, I, I lost two games when I, I had big advantage after the openings. But you must have thought after that opening that you had this game sewn up. Surely, you must have been really. You yes. certainly looked very well. Like, like the third game. Yes, like the, like like the, the third, third game. Like the third yes, game. and we know what happened in yes. the third game. The same result, the same <laughs> situation. But you did yes. win the match, Gary Kasparov. Yes. Many congratulations. Thanks. Thank you. Marvelous. Nigel Shaw, what an amazing day. Gentlemen, 